Hey everyone, this is Matt here on the Vinyl Head UK channel and welcome to our first, do you know what I'm going to call them, appreciation videos. I don't want to just be another review channel. I don't want to review these records. Some of these records have probably been reviewed like thousands of times. I want to appreciate them. I want to appreciate the artwork, the music, the packaging, what's come with it, everything. Rather than just looking at this song sounds like this, this song sounds like that. I want to just appreciate it. So welcome to our first appreciation video. Now, I have picked, hopefully, a fantastic record for you guys to start with. I wanted my first vinyl that I ever bought to mean something significant. And hopefully, this record has. Um, I'm a big metal fan. As you can see, I've got my Gajira shirt on. We're going to cover other genres across this channel. So, I've said about country, I've said about blues, some rock, you know, not quite as heavy stuff but metal holds a special place for me i'm a huge metalhead and so the very first vinyl that i wanted to get and the very first vinyl that i wanted to show in this channel is this one black sabbath by black sabbath for me the album that started it all started heavy metal now there were heavy tracks prior to this by artists. There was heavy tracks by the Beatles, by Jimi Hendrix, by The Who, Cream, just to name a few there. But for me, and I'm sure many will agree, this was the first heavy metal album. Some of these tracks, and pretty much all of these tracks, are heavy. Back then, when it was released, they were heavy. And by today's standards, even with the real heavy stuff being out there in metal, this is still heavy. So, as I say, I wanted the first vinyl that I ever bought to be a significant one. And this, to me, is a very significant record. Black Sabbath, where to be begin? I'm sure most of you will probably have heard of Black Sabbath or know of Black Sabbath or be a fan of Black Sabbath. But if you've stumbled across this video and you're not into metal and you might be wondering, who the hell is Black Sabbath? Let me explain. So Black Sabbath were a English metal band formed in Birmingham, which many would argue is the home of heavy metal, the, the birthplace of heavy metal, for probably good reason. They were four average working guys where they grew up, it wasn't great. Um, they were hardworking individuals. The guitarist, Tony Iommi, actually lost the tips of a couple of his fingers in an industrial accident, uh, which kind of, he thought at the time would stop his guitar playing, but it's quite an iconic story. He actually, um, I think it was bottle caps that he managed to put onto the ends of his fingers and be able to play guitar again. But they were working class guys, so Ozzy Osbourne on vocals, Tony Iommi on guitar, Geezer Butler on bass, and Bill Ward on drums. They started as a blues band before becoming what we know. Um, so this record was released in 1970. It was actually released on Friday the 13th in February. February, Friday 13th. So if you're into all that, and, you know, all your spiritual beliefs and all that. It's already quite a cool date to be releasing something Friday the 13th. Um, but yeah, so it was put out in 1970, Friday the 13th. And this record itself, so let's talk about the one I have here. This is not an original pressing. This is a 2010 reissue. and It was put out by Rhino Records. It's 180 gram. So nice and heavy vinyl. It's got a good sound to it. And this is the US edition. So how does that differ? The track listing is basically the answer. Um, I'll show you the back cover there. So it's kind of 
just a reverse in a way of the front there. I believe this water mill is actually in an Oxfordshire. You still can go and visit it now. And I think it's a bit of a hot spot for Sabbath fans and for metal fans to stand where this lady is and have your photo taken with the, the water mill behind there. But yes, yeah, so the track listing is slightly different on the US version. Evil Woman appeared on the UK version or European version, which is not on this US version. And then Wicked World uh, wasn't on the UK version until I believe 1996 when it got reissued and Wicked World was added, but it appears on this version. So it's real basic, this. There's nothing much to it with the, the packaging, which I quite like. You know, it's it's very basic. It's very simple. It's just a cardboard sleeve. There's no gatefold. There's nothing much to it. No lyric sheet or anything. Um, comes in a nice, simple white paper sleeve. I'm going to carefully pull it out. And there we go. So uh, it's got the Warner Brothers record sticker on. Just about see that. Uh, and yeah, black vinyl. All of my records are on black vinyl. Um, I think some of the coloured vinyl looks cool, but I think I'm probably going to be a traditionalist and just stick to black vinyl. I think it looks cool. Um, I definitely won't be getting picture discs. I think they look a little bit tacky and based on what I've read and what I've heard and people have told me, the sound isn't as good as just regular black vinyl. As I say, it's 180 grams, um, so lovely and sturdy and helps make a little bit of a better sound. It will make the record prolong on its life. Um, especially as this was actually second hand, so it had previous owner. Um, but yeah, it, it looks cool. It looks cool. I'm gonna put it back carefully. I always look after our vinyl. I've learned that early on. No fingerprints, no dust, make sure they're clean. And that's what I like as well with vinyl. That's the appeal. It's looking after it as much as anything. You know, some of my CDs, have got banged up, you know, plastic cases have broke or the jewels have come loose, whatnot, or the CDs scuffed in places, but it's fine, it still plays, it still does what it does. You know, sometimes don't really pay attention to the artwork, it's a bit smaller, but with vinyl, the artwork's right there, you can see it, it's massive. You can take in all the details a lot better. Um, and then just for caring of, the record itself, you know, when it gets a bit dusty, you've got to clean it, got to make sure you keep it in good condition and then you can get real good life out of it. You can have these play decades later, which in later videos I will show you. I've got a couple of uh, records from the 80s. So, you know, they've been around a long time and they still play pretty well. But let's concentrate on this. So, um Track listing, so it's essentially just five tracks, the way they've split it. Um, side one has Black Sabbath, The Wizard, and then they have Wasp, Behind the Wall of Sleep, basically, and NIB together as listed as a single track um, at just over nine and a half minutes. Flip it on to side two, Wicked World, and then again, they group together A Bitter Finger, Sleeping Village, and Warning. At a mighty 14 and a half minutes. Now, I would probably argue that I would see Behind the Wall of Sleep as a separate track with Wasp being kind of an in the intro into that track. And then NIB also being a separate track with basically, basically being the intro. Um, so I, I would split those two, um, but I do keep a bit of Finger Sleeping Village and Warning uh, together as a track in my mind. Probably people have a different view or a different opinion on that, but just for me, maybe that's going off the CD version. Um, but yeah, that's just, just how I see it personally. So how does it play? Um, 
amazing is the simple answer to it when i was looking to get vinyl i as i say i wanted the first one to be a great one so i did a quite a bit of research now the original uk first pressings the vertigo ones with the really cool vertigo swirl on the center of the the record itself they were as you can imagine pretty expensive so scrolling through the internet and google came across a lot of people saying that this 2010 reissue by rhino was the one to go for so i took a chance and i went with it and the first time i put it on it blew my mind it really did i couldn't believe how amazing it sounded this record i have listened to thousands of times through cd and digitally hearing it come through my speakers when i put that vinyl on so black sabbath for opening track you get the rain and then the thunder and then dun, that riff or that sorry that first note it just i never heard it like that and then the bass so the bass you get a couple of moments where geezers are mm, on that bass and when you listen to it on a cd you know the if you turn it right up you get a bit of distortion or sometimes a lot of distortion and the bass when it comes through you you're almost vibrating where you're sat that didn't happen i gave this record a bit of welly on the volume i think it deserved it you know it's metal it's rock you know we, we want it loud so i gave it a bit of welly on the volume and i didn't vibrate the room didn't vibrate that bass, especially the mm, bit on Black Sabbath for track, just sounded so pure. It didn't distort. It was pure. And I've never heard, in all the hundreds of times I've listened to that track, I've never heard it's the bass sound so pure like that. And it, I knew I had made the right decision uh, with this purchase and with this particular reissue. Um, each track... It just sounds magnificent. The audio separates very nicely for each instrument. It's not condensed. Tony, Giza and Bill Ward are three fantastic musicians and you can follow in each instrument so clearly. It's not compressed together and you, you can't really pick apart Giza's bass lines or whatever. You can follow each instrument and that is just a dream when you listen to musicians as good as these guys are. Um, so you've got The Wizard after Black Sabbath. I had to think then, had a blank. Uh, the Wizard, it sounds great. You've got that harmonica at the start of Ozzy. Fantastic before it leaves into a, a brilliant track, which I think was actually based on Gandalf from The Lord of the Rings. Um, Behind the Wall of Sleep, again, brilliant bass lines. NIB, uh, here's a fun fact for you as well. NIB, uh, so it's about Lucifer. It's from Lucifer's point of view. And most people believed it meant NIB, Nativity in Black. But no, what I actually learned was um, it's based on Bill Ward's beard because it looked like a pen nib in the shape of it so they had some fun and they called it nib nib based on a beard so there you go it's, it's very dark lyrics but they could have some fun as well um wicked world a really fantastic track i love that track i actually saw and this is something to go check out there's a, a recent or fairly recent within the last 10 years video of the guys in the studio playing wicked world and if you ever want to see ozzy jive Go check out that video. It sounds amazing. They can still play magnificently. Ozzy, okay, his vocals aren't quite where they used to be, but it sounds fantastic still. And you get to see Ozzy jive and what more could you want, really? Um, and then that last track, A Bit of Finger, Sleeping Village and Warning, it's just a journey for 14 and a half minutes. You have... Tony Iommi just going off and 
playing solos, playing riffs, and they just they don't stop. It just they just do not stop that whole way through to 14 and a half minutes. There's instrumental passages and it just sounds fantastic. You you have no other words to describe it other than fantastic. So I really love this album. And do you know what? Here's another fun fact for you. This is mind blowing. This album took a day to record, a single day to record. If you compare that to albums these days, you know, bands are in the studio for months at a time, months and months, and it costs probably hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever to record. This was 600 pounds, which back then in 1970 was a hell of a lot of money. I'm sure of that. But by today's standards, that's not a lot of money. But 600 pounds and a single day to record. To me, that's just mind blowing. To produce something as good as this record. Wow. And it just goes to show, you know, you, you don't need tons of money and you don't need um, all these massive budgets and, and days and months and whatever to record something as incredible as this record. Um, I hope as metal fans, those metal fans that are watching, this is a staple of your record collection. If it isn't, I don't know what you're doing. Go and get it. Go and get it right now. Go and order it. Um, and yeah, if you stumbled across this channel and you're not a metal fan, go and check it out. You might be pleasantly surprised by it. It's not in your face, screamy, like people think metal is. It's it's musically really nice. They are fantastic musicians. Ozzy can really sing back in the day. He's a fantastic vocalist. Um, but I'm really happy with this purchase. As I say, a 2010 reissue by Rhino. If you can get your hands on this reissue, I would definitely recommend it. If you've got a lot of money to burn, try and check out those original UK Vertigo presses. Um, you know, be prepared to pay the big bucks, but I reckon it would be fully worth it. And just enjoy this album. I do. I play it a lot. You know, I've built up a reasonable record collection pretty early on, but this still gets a lot of play already. Um, it's quite the staple and I think it deserves to be. So check it out. If you've already got it, go and put it on right now. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath, our first vinyl appreciation video. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. We'll be back for a lot more. Take care.